Hello, I am Glenn Hall. Today is March 30th, 2023. And this video is called God's Judgments Are Speeding Up. Today, um, I'm going to mainly be reading from a prophet's writing that he wrote um, around 50 years ago. J. Leland Earls, E-A-R-L-S. Today, I was led to read um, a writing of his called Let My People Go, and it is a prophetic writing that God gave him concerning God's ten end-time plagues. I had wanted to go on a day trip today, and I've wanted to do that several times over the last year or year and a half and it seems like every time I want to suddenly I become very sick and I think the reason is is because the day for day trips the day for vacations is over God's judgments are speeding up now, I hope you pay some attention to the news and that you don't just watch mainstream news and, and take it all as truth. <clears throat> but you can find reports of increasing major catastrophes in the United States. Just this morning, uh, I awoke to two major ones, a, a huge uh, train derailment and fire with hazardous chemicals up in Minnesota. And then a second one that could even be far greater in severity, and that is a barge that broke loose by accident in Kentucky and is now lodged at some pier that is holding tons and tons of hazardous material. Monday, we heard the news of the shooting at Covenant Christian School in Nashville, Tennessee. That's probably, that probably is a false flag psyop that was engineered by those who love us so much. God's judgments are speeding up. For any of you who have been watching my videos for some time, you know that uh, last year a little bit, um, well, about four, uh, 13 months ago, I began to have stroke-like symptoms. And that was exactly three months after I had had COVID-19. That continued all year last year and then in August I began having serious what seemed like serious heart attack symptoms. I refused to go to mainstream medicine for any type of help because I knew what they were doing with respect to the whole COVID response and, and had no confidence in them until one day uh, at the end of uh, August, I believe it was last year, <clears throat> I went for a day trip and I was in such pain coming home that I stopped at an emergency room and was there for um, over eight hours. They did several tests, including two EKG tests and uh, I, the blood enzyme test. And at the end of the day, around midnight, two doctors who had seen me that day concurred that they didn't think I had had a stroke in the past, and they did not think that I had had a heart attack in the past. However, I feel like I've had those symptoms. Lately, there is a, a doctor an MD who's also a PhD, 
Her name is Anna Mahalsha. I think it's M-I-H-A-L-C-E-A. And she has done some uh, very interesting research along with Clifford Carnahan, or Carnacon, can't remember his last name, who was one of the pioneer researchers in Morgellons disease. And they have seen the, they have looked at the blood of the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, and they find the same things happening in the blood of, she says, 100% of the blood samples she's looked at. And that is that there are computer chips being formed in the blood. There are strings of things being formed in the blood. There's clotting of the blood. And she says 100% of the people that she has looked at. <clears throat> One of the things that's been very distressing to me is that uh, I suffered and am still suffering from COVID, from the results of COVID. <clears throat> and I thought I would not have suffered from it. I believed that God would protect me from it. Now it's interesting today, as I, I'm going to read now through the 10 plagues that God gave to J. Leland Earls in prophecy. And it will become apparent why this has happened to me and to others, because I know I'm not alone. There's a lot of you that are suffering. I read this, I first read this, I think 10 years ago, something like 10 years ago. Didn't really know what to make of it, to think of it. Um, but I was led to read it today. And I read it backwards. I read from the 10th backwards to the 1st. And I was really quite amazed and felt that it's something I need to share with you. Because the judgments are speeding up. The great tribulation, the three and a half year tribulation is at hand, it's very close. And as I go through these prophecies, if you've been paying attention, you're going to see just how accurate these prophecies are. So we'll begin now reading, and I plan to just read it with very few comments. Once in a while I'll have a comment. Okay. Leland Earls called this, Let My People Go. The time has come, says the Lord, for my people to know the meaning of the plagues which came on the land of Egypt when I delivered my people with an outstretched arm and with fury poured forth. For I say to you that the ten plagues which fell on Egypt are a type of that which I... I will do in this last day as I prepare to deliver my people from the oppressions of the enemy, even from Satan and his hosts. Therefore hear, and I will speak to you of that which is even now taking place on the earth. For I say to you that there are vessels which I have chosen and prepared to be used of me in this day, even as Moses and Aaron were prepared to be used in their day. For both Moses and Aaron are types of those who will be used of me to lead my people in the days that are at hand. First of all, you will notice that Moses and Aaron appeared before Pharaoh and demanded that my people go free. But what did Pharaoh do? He hardened his heart and refused to let the people go. 
It was not until Moses and Aaron were able to demonstrate divine power that Pharaoh was moved to relent. But even after he was moved to relent, he hardened his heart again and again to hinder my purpose. Even so, is this a type of the activity of Satan in this end time? Knowing that his time is short, he is working with all his might to keep the people in bondage. He is reluctant to give any ground to those who would challenge his hold. Therefore, I have determined to raise up those like Moses and Aaron, who will be empowered by my spirit to demand the release of the captives and see them go free. For I will move mightily in this day, says the Lord, to liberate my people that they may worship me three days in the wilderness, according to Exodus 5.3. Now these three days are a type of the three years of tribulation which are coming, wherein a great host of my people will be liberated into a realm of the Spirit that they have not known before. And in their newfound freedom, they shall truly worship me in spirit and in truth. This shall be in the very wilderness of the tribulation period, when the wrath of Satan will be mounting in fury as he seeks to keep the people in bondage. It will be during that time of great testing which is to come on the earth to try every man, according to Revelation 3.10. Now consider, says the Lord, were not Moses and Aaron appointed to work together to bring forth a mighty deliverance? And will I not fulfill the type in this day as I prepare a Moses company and an Aaron company to work together in the power of my spirit? Now he's using the phrase type and anti-type. And I often say parables that all of scripture is written in parables. They're true stories with a prophetic meaning, and they apply prophetically in the future. And so what Leland Earls is doing is showing us the prophetic application of the ten plagues that happened in the time of Moses and Aaron. Who are these two companies, says the Lord, Moses and Aaron? First, let us look at Moses. Moses was the younger of the two, Aaron being his older brother, according to Exodus 7.7. Yet, though Aaron was the older, Moses was the leader of the two, as we see in Exodus 4.16 and 7.1. Now, since Aaron was the older, he is a type of that which comes first in time. Then shall Moses follow after. Is this not according to that which you read in the 12th chapter of Revelation? For two groups are pictured there. First, there is the woman who represents my glorious church, which I am raising up and which shall minister in power during the tribulation. But notice, says the Lord, before she fully begins her ministry in power, a man-child is born out of her and is caught up to the throne of God. That's in Revelation 12.5. Now the man-child, being the younger, is the latter-day Moses company who shall come forth to deathless life as the manifested sons of God. The woman, or glorious church, is the latter-day Aaron company. Therefore the two shall work together, the church and the manifested sons, even as Aaron and Moses work together to deliver my people. I find this interesting because uh, I recently asked my wife who my, if she knew who my hero was in Scripture. And uh, it didn't take her long. She just said, Moses. Okay. Now what, says the Lord, did Moses and Aaron use to demonstrate their divine power? Was it not the rod in Exodus 4.17? And what does this rod represent? It represents the word of your God. Remember the overcomer's rule with a rod of iron. It represents the word of your God, which will be spoken with power and authority by those whom I shall commission. And that word shall be confirmed by mighty signs and wonders. Let me show you now, says the Lord, that which shall be as a result of the ministry of my chosen and anointed ones. Is it not written that my two witnesses will have the power to do signs and wonders and to smite the earth with plagues? 
That's in Revelation 11.6. Now who are these two witnesses? Already I've shown you much concerning this. For the truth concerning the two witnesses has more than one application and fulfillment. But considered in the context of that which I am now revealing to you in this prophecy, the two witnesses are Moses and Aaron, or the manifested sons and the glorious church. And they shall be empowered to cause plagues to come on the earth as a result of their ministry, even as Moses and Aaron. The first plague. Now consider, <clears throat> now consider, says the Lord, and I will show you the fulfillment of the plagues which came upon Egypt. First, Moses and Aaron, <clears throat> Moses and Aaron were given authority to turn the waters of Egypt into blood. That's in Exodus seven nineteen through twenty five. What does this mean in its latter day application? Is not water a type of the human soul? with its emotions and feelings? And is not blood the result of human beings killing one another when their emotions get beyond control? Even so shall it be in this day. The water of human emotions will be so aroused with passions and desires that much blood will be shed. And what will cause this? The cause must be considered from several perspectives, but considered from the perspective of my chosen servants, the cause will be a reaction to the authority of the rod which is the power of my word spoken against the godless and licentious living which will abound among the multitudes. The word which will be preached in power in the days that are ahead will bring great division among the people. This is because so many are being taken captive by doctrines of devils, and the spirit of libertine conduct is spreading among all segments of society. Even the church world is losing its moorings believing less and less of the inspired word, and partaking more and more of the reasonings of man based on pseudoscience. People generally will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, as Paul says in 2 Timothy 3, verse 4. Compromises of all kinds will be the order of the day. The water of human emotions and desires will run rampant. Clearly we see that today, especially in these last few years. Suddenly, in the midst of all this, there shall arise a people who speak with the authority of their God, and who will wield a rod of truth which will startle and anger the multitudes. Many will hear and be converted, and most will arise against those who are preaching a strict code of righteousness and denounce them as reactionaries. Then shall I move to bring judgment, says the Lord, for my word cannot be thwarted. That which will be spoken by my servants in that day shall be as a creative word. The very speaking of it shall bring it to pass. The multitudes who refuse to hear will receive the judgment of that spoken word. The very speaking of that word of judgment will inevitably turn the waters into blood. In other words, those who refuse truth, confirmed by many signs, will be turned over to the delusion of their perverted sense knowledge. They will become the victims of of the instability of their rampant desire natures, whipped to frenzy point by countless hosts of the netherworld released to try all men in this end time. Well, if the Nashville shooting really happened, certainly that is this. And even if it was a false flag psyop, they're still trying to come against those who would speak up for truth. Now note, because of the conflicting interests of people giving full vent to perverted desires and the fever pitch which will be reached through satanic control and influence, there will develop intense strife over all major issues of the day. Instead of the due processes of law and order, you know, I, I've been an attorney for 33 years and um, you know, what law and order do we have? Instead of the due processes of law and order, people will generally be moved to take matters in their own hands, submitting to means of intimidation and violence instead of reason. The water of soulish desires and emotions will gain complete control of people. 
The result will be intense conflict and violence, resulting in much bloodshed. This will be turning the water into blood. Conflicts will arise over race, religion, employment, wages, working conditions, social mores, wealth distribution, education, government, foreign policy, communism, socialism, medicine, health, the press, thought control, and many other issues, which will keep the general condition of society in such a tumultuous and fluid state that demonstrations, riots, boycotts, strikes, pressures, intimidations, and other forms of emotional outbursts will be the order of the day, resulting in constant bloodletting. This will be the judgment of the rod, the word of God, upon people who have refused to hear the truth. Left to the instability of their demon-crazed ways, they become the victims of violence and blood. The result of the first plague on Egypt was simply to harden Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. Thus you can see how the chaos of the times will enable him to harden his control over the people through increasing dictatorial powers placed in the hands of those who are working for absolute supremacy of the beast governments. That totally describes what I've seen in my lifetime and especially what I have seen since 1992, when I was first elected to state government. We've had so many false flag attacks in this country, um, so many psyops done against us, against the people. And now, let me read the last line of this. Thus you can see how the chaos of the times will enable him, Pharaoh, Satan, to harden his control over the people through increasing dictatorial powers placed in the hands of those who are working for absolute supremacy of the beast governments. But what is a 15-minute city? What are all of um, the things World Economic Forum is uh, saying we ought to do? What was... uh, Denmark doing when they, I think it was, they wanted to close down 30,000 farms in their country. Dictatorial powers placed in the hands of those who are working for absolute supremacy of the beast governments. Second plague. When Pharaoh refused to let the people of Israel go free, Moses and Aaron were commanded to lift the rod over the same waters which had previously been turned to blood. Thus we are seeing the result of the same condition of emotional instability in those who have been turned over to the delusions of their sense knowledge and obsessed by satanic spirits. And what is that result, says the Lord? Frogs came up out of the waters and covered the land of Egypt, entering the houses of all the people. That's in Exodus 5 through 6 and 11. This is a symbolic portrayal of the second plague of judgment, which is to come upon the inhabitants of the earth in the end time. Because of the instability of the times and the susceptibility of the people to all kinds of emotional onslaughts, there shall come forth all kinds of isms, teachings, cults, pseudo-religious movements, quasi-front groups subtly promoting extremist positions and causes of all kinds, opportunists and quacks, subversives with their blatant propaganda, government protagonists in autocratic rule, science deifiers. Don't you believe the science? Did you take the jab? Only because you believed what they said was science. And atheistic and agnostic hucksters of all kinds of libertine thought and conduct. These are the frogs with their croaking. Doctrines of devils, preying upon every segment of society, invading the houses and even the bedchambers and beds of rulers, people, and servants, as we see in Exodus 8, verse 3. Because of this plague, Pharaoh relented momentarily, calling for Moses and Aaron, and giving them permission to go and sacrifice unto their God. Here is an indication, says the Lord, of that which will be taking place during the end-time judgments. In the midst of all the croaking of the frogs, 
a certain segment of people will begin to turn in earnest to their God, causing Satan to lose his grip on many. The fact that Pharaoh hardens his heart again indicates Satan's attempt to counter this move of God by strengthening his hold on the majority of the people and also by instigating persecution against those who are turning to righteousness. The fact that the frogs died out of the houses and out of the villages and out of the fields is a type of three groups which will enter into the ways of truth, turning from the ways of deceit and godless living. The houses represent the hundredfold Christians, the villages the sixtyfold Christians, and the open fields the thirtyfold Christians. The degree of their turning away from unrighteousness and error and the extent to which they enter into the truth and being of Christ will determine their grouping. From the open field of the thirtyfold, they can progress to the village of the sixtyfold, and finally into the house of the hundredfold. Each step brings a more intimate contact and association with the living Christ. For in the symbolic picture, intimacy of contact would naturally increase as one progressed from the open field through the village and into the house. The third plague. Now you will notice, says the Lord, that suddenly a third plague came upon Egypt without warning in Exodus 8.16. Aaron stretched forth his rod and smote the dust of the earth. Out of the dust came forth lice upon man and upon beast. Now what does this symbolize for the end time? Does it not show, says the Lord, the mysterious diseases and afflictions which will come upon the inhabitants of the earth because of their lawless and godless ways? Hmm, mysterious diseases. You mean like COVID-19 and than all the things that happen because of COVID-19, like stroke and blood clots and heart attack. Again, it is the stretching forth of the rod, the preaching of the word of truth which is shunned and rejected that causes judgment to fall. Doctors will not be able to cope with the situation. As unprecedented maladies attack both men and animals, this is the meaning of the statement that the magicians of Egypt tried to bring forth lice but were unable to do so. All the serums devised by the wise men of the time will produce no inoculation. Many men of the medical profession will frankly admit the need of turning to God for an answer, even as the magicians of Egypt said, this is the finger of God. During the two preceding plagues, the magicians of Egypt were able to produce with their own enchantments. This means that the wise men of the latter day will have a measure of success in dealing with the first two plagues, the emotional violence leading to bloodshed and the multitudinous croaking of conflicting interests. They will employ their enchantments of psychology, psychiatry, mental health, pacification, wonder drugs, shock treatments, social therapy, and clinics. By these measures, they will be able to help maintain a measure of immunization from the effects of plagues one and two. But when the third plague strikes with increasing ferocity and multitudes of humans and animals are affected by diverse maladies. I just realized he talks about animals. How many chickens have we had killed here in America over the last year? So many sicknesses affecting humans and animals. But when the third plague strikes with increasing ferocity and multitudes of humans and animals are affected by diverse maladies, the wise men of medicine will soon find that their methods of treatment are not getting results. Many will say, only God can intervene and save much life from perishing. Well, I don't hear many wise men or doctors saying that, but I'm saying that because we're done unless God now makes a distinction. And this is very interesting because now we're to the fourth plague. And listen to this. Will you not look with me at the fourth plague, says the Lord? This one is of particular importance because I did sever the land of Goshen where my people were dwelling that they might receive protection. 
See, God's people were not protected during the first three plagues. So the diseases of the third plague hit God's people. But now, he says, the fourth plague, he will protect. He says, and will I not protect in this last day from the effects of this plague, those who put their complete trust in me? You will note, says the Lord, that this plague did not come as a result of Aaron's rod being lifted up, but it came as an immediate providential judgment as a sign to Pharaoh and the Egyptians of the supremacy of the living God, according to Exodus 8, verses 22 and 23. And what shall I do in the last day, says the Lord, which will demonstrate that I am in charge of the affairs of the earth and of all mankind? It will not come primarily as a result of the people's refusal to hear the truth, but it will come to vindicate the name of Jesus Christ. It will be part of my strategy to bring my people to their knees and to speed up the work which I will be doing by my Spirit in a people of my choosing. Just before the plague falls, just before the fourth plague falls, there will be a dividing. The dividing will be twofold. First, I will divide or separate 144,000 of the choicest of my saints and suddenly remove them from the physical realm into the spiritual or heavenly realm. Their physical bodies shall be suddenly translated into glorified bodies. The taking of these 144,000 first fruits, just as Revelation 14.1 says, will cause a further division to take place. Those who are truly mine shall immediately recognize the significance of what has taken place. They're not part of the 144,000, but they will immediately know what happened. Now, my wife and I believe that we could, that she and I could be part of this 144,000. You know, maybe we're just foolishly optimistic or crazy, crazily optimistic, but we see things that others don't see and our children don't even see what we see. But we both believe that as soon as this happens, our children will know what happened. They will recognize the significance of what has taken place. Without hesitation, back to the word of the Lord, without hesitation they shall, re they shall turn to me with their whole heart and seek me as never before. After a short time of earnest petition, my spirit shall be poured out in a mighty deluge of power. So, as I've said before, this could be the great revival that everybody's expecting, but they weren't expecting this rapture of the 144,000 before because they thought they were all going to be part of that. After a short time of earnest petition, my spirit shall be poured out in a mighty deluge of power. The effect of these stunning spiritual developments will be to divide those who truly mean business with me and those who have been mere professors. As never before, there will be clear-cut lines of demarcation between those who are truly all-out Christians and those who want to make a pretense with a form of godliness. This is the meaning of the severance of the land of Goshen from Egypt in Exodus 8, 22 and 23. Egypt is a type of this world ruled by Lucifer, the prince of darkness. Goshen thus becomes a type of those who have completely renounced Lucifer's kingdom and have been regenerated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Those of the land of Goshen, symbolically speaking, will then be completely protected from all succeeding plagues. This will be possible through the supernatural ministry of the 144,000 glorified saints who will be on constant duty 
and who will have the power to appear and speak words of guidance and help. Immediately following the dividing, there shall come the fourth plague as on Egypt. Is it not written that there was a grievous swarm of flies in Exodus 8, 24? Now what says the Lord does this signify? It is simply the aftermath of judgmental division which takes place by the power of my spirit. The plague cannot be separated from the dividing. It is one judgment. Those who are mine in the symbolic land of Goshen are not affected by this aftermath because they shall have entered into the reality and assurance of my spirit. They shall know where they stand and what the future holds for them. But those who are still a part of Lucifer's kingdom and the spirit of Egypt's land will be in a state of utter confusion. They will seek for answers, but will have none. Yet they will still be too much in love with the world and the things of the world to turn from their unrighteous ways. The flies in Egypt were a terrible annoyance, but were not actually destructive. They entered the houses of the Egyptians until their houses were full of them. You see that in Exodus 8.21. The house, again, becomes a type of intimate relationship. Even so are the flies a type of the torments, fears, uncertainties, resentments, and inward disturbances, which will be the lot of those who will have become aware of the mighty division which will have been enacted. Yet they will be too willfully carnal to change their ways. This tormenting situation will be the direct result of my strategic maneuvers. Though not wanting to abandon their worldly ways, there will be large numbers who will become increasingly interested and concerned about spiritual things, fearing their own safety and future. This is pictured by Pharaoh again seeming to relent and giving permission for the Hebrews to sacrifice to their God. But note, says the Lord, Pharaoh wants them to sacrifice in the land of Egypt rather than going into the wilderness. That's Exodus 8.25. This is a type of compromise Christianity, which many will want. But Moses stands firm. For he knows that their sacrifice must include the abomination of the Egyptians, which the Egyptians will not tolerate. Exodus 8.26 This is none other than the Lamb of God slain, slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13.8 Sheep were abominable to the Egyptians. The antitypical or prophetic fulfillment is simply this. My true servants in this day will not stand for any compromised form of Christianity, which eliminates the necessity of the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ as God's Lamb. Because of this uncompromising position, my true servants will have to go three days into the wilderness according to Exodus 8.27. These three days picture in round numbers the approximate three years of great tribulation which is coming on the earth. There will be much tribulation before that, and indeed we have been in much tribulation. But the three years will be the most intense part. The wilderness is a type of the testing through persecution, which will be the lot of all those who remain true to their God. Let me read that again. The wilderness is a type of the testing through persecution, which will be the lot of all those who remain true to their God, unwilling to compromise with the Egyptians of the world. Pharaoh again relents slightly, saying, Go and sacrifice in the wilderness, but don't go very far. Exodus 8 28. This pictures the fact that there will be continued attempts to get the Christians to compromise. After the initial shock of the realization that 144,000 Christians have been taken begins to subside and the torments and fears have been somewhat allayed, then shall the worldly become more confirmed in their ways. This is pictured by Pharaoh hardening his heart again in Exodus 8.32. I'm going to end this video today and then I will um, do the last six plagues 
uh, as soon as I can.